keep doing everything that you see here on the comments shown okay so the first story is joe biden so joe biden is in trouble okay so joe biden is now uh, really into f pretty far into the second year right we're, it, we're reaching the middle point of joe biden's administration uh, joe biden has been presiding over a pretty stagnant political situation in the united states right COVID 19 has continued to rage we've had economic crisis really continue in a lot of ways mainly through inflation now although as you all may know measures such as unemployment in the united states are very 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 limited they actually don't tell us much and they actually obscure more than they tell us so usually unemployment is a lot higher than what is being reported we already know that a lot of the income losses a lot of the losses of wealth really do affect of the lowest 90 percent of all earners and so working people are having a really difficult time right now in the united states and that has been the story of the joe biden administration since he came in promising to build back better and to restore the soul of the nation and to really do the opposite of what donald trump ha has did during his administration we've pretty much seen joe biden continue trump's policies add on to policies that Trump put forward both on the domestic and foreign policy scene. And we've also seen him do uh, new things, right? We've seen him escalate in ways that Donald Trump couldn't imagine in some areas, especially in foreign policy. And that's what we're seeing, I think, now, right? We're seeing Joe Biden really play the role of the hawk that he always has been, right? Imagine if Donald Trump right was here getting rid of asylum limited asylum policies like he did today joe biden got rid of that for people crossing the u.s mexico border right there was a covid restriction that allowed people to get asylum a little bit quicker who are crossing the border now that's gone we know about the deportations we know about how the detentions have grown the ice raids have grown we know that the militarization of the police has grown that joe biden has been all about funding the police, right? Funding the police more. It doesn't matter what his constituents say, right? People want universal health care. They want student debt relief. And Joe Biden hasn't provided any of it. And Joe Biden won't even fight for the Build Back Better policy. He will not oppose. He will not stand up to Joe Manchin, Kristen Sinema, and all these so-called moderate Democrats, of which he is one, in order to get things done that would literally save his administration. So what has happened? Well, we've seen consecutive months of Joe Biden's approval rating plummeting. I've covered this story even just six weeks ago, right? In the month of March, uh, in the in late February, we saw Joe Biden's approval rating, I think was somewhere around, hovering around uh, 44, 43%. And that was just a further decline from what was the case in April, 2021, where it was over 50%. So now it's even worse. A new NBC News poll shows us that his situation is even worse despite all of his efforts to escalate things with Russia, to intimidate Russia, to really come out looking like some kind of bully and the good guy in this situation, right? He's trying to promote the United States as this arbiter of democracy. And we've seen the exact opposite of that. We've seen Joe Biden pump ukraine with weapons sanction russia to the detriment of the entire global capitalist economy prices are rising everywhere and they already were but now with energy prices it is going through the roof the eu is scrambling they don't know what to do they're even trying to saber rattle with china now while they're in this eu china summit it is a disaster and the economic situation is very unstable and it is already hurting working people and so people who are polled in this nbc news poll that i'm going to pull up now are telling joe biden that they do not approve of what is happening here at all that they are very angry with their current situation and they have a lot of reasons to be angry and so here is the story 
Biden's job approval falls to the lowest level of his presidency amid war and inflation fears. Seven in 10 Americans express low confidence in the president's ability to deal with Russia's invasion of Ukraine as his approval fell to 40% in a new NBC News poll. So this is during the nation's largest inflation spike in 40 years. Let me make this bigger for you all, actually. Overwhelming majorities say they believe the country is headed in the wrong direction and disapproved of the president's handling of the economy. Those are some of the major findings of this new national NBC News poll, which found that Biden's overall job approval rating had declined to just 40 percent, the lowest level of his presidency. They also found that Republicans enjoyed a two point lead in answering which party should control Congress ahead of November's midterm elections. So that's huge trouble. OK, so this poll was conducted March 18th to the 22nd before the president's overseas trips where he met with NATO allies. He gave that speech in Poland where he said we, we can't have Putin in power, right? So it came before that, but it's unclear how that would actually change things. It might change things a bit, but this is still monumental. 80% of Americans say they agree with Biden's decision to ban Russian oil imports, even if it means higher gas prices. So there are some things here, as they say, silver linings, they say. And I think what this indicates is more that the electorate is already very conservative and they already are kind of in the bag for war, right? A lot of these are Republican and Democratic Party voters, very loyal, partisan voters, those who do not really askew the establishment line on any issue. So the fact that his polling numbers have some of these silver linings should not come as a surprise. It just shows a bit of a confusion. But the big issue here for Biden is these this graph, okay? So Biden's job ratings has fallen to a new low. Do you approve or disapprove of how Biden is doing as president? Look at, look at April 2021. 53% said they approved of him. 39% said they disapproved. Now it's almost reversed. 40% approve, 55% disapprove. So in a span of a year, Joe Biden has essentially pummeled and plummeted his stock with the electorate, the voting public. And that's a huge deal because these are the people who do determine elections in a lot of ways. Well, we know that the rigging of the election system actually determines elections. But in terms of those who vote and give legitimacy to the system, it's, it's these kind of people who are really determining the elections, not the working people who are already disaffected or already pushed out of the voting system. So let's keep reviewing this, okay? So the erosion in Biden's approval rating has been across the board among key demographic groups, including black respondents from 64% approved in January to just 62% now. So it'd be a 2% decline with black voters. That's a huge decline. Women, 51% approved to now 44%. Latinos, 48% to 39%. And then independents, 36% to 32%, already a low numbers. Lumber. So uh, the GOP pollster, so this is the Republicans. We have to, of course, put a little bit of an asterisk here, but they're saying that you cannot get down to the low 40s in presidential approval unless you have strained your own base. And we saw Donald Trump had done that to a degree late in his first term. Late in his first term, he was having some struggles as well. So here's handling on the issues, okay? And when we look at this, this is important, okay? And let me just, uh, okay. So this is important. So this is dividing up between the COVID-19, the economy, and foreign policy. And so with COVID-19, he has de declined in some ways, but actually improved from the last poll from earlier this year, January. So he's actually had a 7% spike in the handling of COVID-19. Not really sure what that means, but given that things have opened up a bit, life, I think, is a little more uh, a bit, quote unquote, normal. There's just a little less regard for COVID-19, not something that I necessarily agree with 100%, but a lot of people are just sick and tired of the restrictions. And so we have to actually acknowledge that reality, whether we agree with all of it or not. So he's, he's received a boost there, but the economy, 
this is actually what will probably determine the 2022 midterm elections and then 2024. And this is where the disaster is for him. Foreign policy, I think, is its own disaster, and I'll get into that. But look at this. Every single poll since April has seen a marked decline. 5% between April 2021 to August of 2021, just 40% approval in October 2021, 38% approval of Joe Biden's economic policies in, in January 2022, and now just 33%. So just 33% believe Joe Biden is doing a good job with the economy. That is huge. That means that a lot of people are unhappy about where they are economically. And why should they be happy? Wages have stagnated. Debt continues to mount. Rent prices are going through the roof. Gas prices through the roof. The risk of homelessness is at an all-time high. Child poverty went up by six to eight million people just because the Biden administration allowed the child tax credit to expire. A lot of the COVID pandemic, 19 pandemic support, whether it's extended unemployment, et cetera, those policies are gone. There really isn't much to hang your head on. They're saying there are more jobs out there, but these jobs are shit jobs. They are bullshit jobs. They are low wage jobs. They are not paying the bills. People are feeling the heat and they are telling Joe Biden they're feeling the heat. And then foreign policy, there's a little bit of an uptick from January 2022 to March 2022, but with some caveats there, okay? So to the cost of living issue, I found this very interesting. 62% of respondents said their family incomes are falling behind the cost of living. 62% of respondents in this poll said that their family incomes are falling behind the cost of living. These are people who are diehard Republicans and Democrats. These are not the poorest people. These are not those who are on the margins, who are excluded from the electoral system. This means that even people within a certain political and economic milieu are feeling the heat. And so that is not good news for Joe Biden. That is not good news for Joe Biden. This is very, very bad news for Joe Biden, that this poll is indicating that people are struggling this much. It means that he is likely and the Democrats are likely to lose a chunk of their base and lose enthusiasm, which I think is a given, right? So there, these are just how the polling numbers uh, in, in a graph. So I'll just skip that. But, you know, we can get in. I don't really want to get in who's the blame for inflation. inflation. Uh, President Biden has shown... Uh, to be blamed in this poll uh, for inflation. And of course, because he's the face of the United States, he's the commander in chief, and he's the one who's talking about recovery, 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 and the opposite is true. So this is what I want to talk to you all about as well. Concerns about the war in Ukraine. So there's some interesting data points here that I think we have to take seriously. First is that there are people who are worried about the U.S.'s role in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. So 83% said they're concerned that the war is increasing the cost of goods like gasoline. That's just a given. Of course, people are going to be unhappy that right as the news is talking daily all the time about how Russia is intervening in Ukraine and the United States has XYZ sanctions on Ukraine, and then that is leading to this spike in the cost of living. Of course, there's going to be worry about that. Then there's the 82% who said they're concerned that the war will involve nuclear weapons. Now, that is a huge concern. That means 82% of people in this poll believe that this could be a nuclear conflict or already really is one. And the reason for that, I do not believe the reason for that is because people are worried that the United States are, is going to use nuclear weapons. So I don't think this is some kind of anti-interventionist political position. I do happen to think I do therapy on the side and I have clients who say, that they're worried that Russia is going to use nuclear weapons against the United States. And that's because of the report uh, that happened earlier this March during the beginning phases of the Russia-Ukraine conflict where Russia put its deterrent forces on high alert in its nuclear program, nuclear weapons program. That news led people to people who follow, who follow polls, who do polls, who watch mainstream media, they begin to have concerns about Russia and Russia's possibility of using nuclear weapons against the United States. 
But an important thing here, though, is that even if the anxiety isn't where we want it to be, right? Because I think that's not the case. That's not reality. I do not think that Russia is going to use nuclear weapons or ever would use nuclear weapons, even though it has the most in the world against the United States. That would be mutually assured destruction and really quite foolish. But the fact that people have that much anxiety will also cause people to be dissatisfied with Joe Biden's performance because on the one hand, you have people who genuinely do not want, and most people genuinely don't want, right? 74% said they're concerned the U.S. will send combat troops to fight Ukraine. People don't want that. So there, there are people who are genuinely concerned that that announcement by Russia at that time would send the United States into Ukraine for some kind of final solution or something, some escalation of the conflict. But then you see that people are actually concerned about combat troops in Ukraine because people don't want to see that. They don't want to see a direct intervention. They don't want to see World War III, even if their politics are anti-Russia because of all the propaganda. So that anxiety, that war anxiety and fatigue could really hurt Joe Biden because really Joe Biden ends up being in a place where he cannot win. So the anti-Russia propaganda means that people are a little bit more primed to want to see aggressive measures, but they're also in this double bind. These aggressive measures put puts their anxiety on high, but they're not willing to say, we just need peace. So Joe Biden can't say we need peace because he'll look weak on Russia, but also he can't do what would be really the destructive and foolish thing to do, which is to escalate this thing even further because of the limitations of the United States, what that would even further do to the economy, what that would do to the global situation. The United States isn't prepared for that. It isn't built for that. So in effect, he's in trouble. He doesn't really have anywhere he can go. And that will lead people to then look at him as weak, incompetent. You know, there's just so many ways to look at Joe Biden right now and how he's positioned the United States on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, which is just counterproductive for him. The only way, right, and this would never happen, but the only way that the United States could come out of this looking strong and maybe garnering some modicum of popularity, maybe isolating the most hawkish and conservative elements would be just to lead negotiations and lead a peace agreement and give some concessions to Russia and allow Russia to give some concessions to Ukraine and come to some kind of at least forestalled uh, you know, ceasefire, some kind of ceasefire that would help boost the Democrats' image and public relations image going to the midterms and then to 2024. But they're not going to do that because that would look soft on Russia and that would anger the Pentagon. And it's unclear whether those negotiations would bear fruit anyway, given how there are so many forces in the military industrial complex who want to see the opposite. So really, there is not a lot of confidence in Joe Biden and managing the Ukraine crisis, 44%. So people are not happy about this. They're not happy about what's going on. And this is a huge turning point, I think. Okay. So I'm just going to end this because there's not really much else to say about this poll. It's just bad across the board. But you see how people don't have confidence. They're worried about the U.S.'s role in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. They're very unhappy about the economic situation, and it's hurting Joe Biden in the polls in this critical moment where Joe Biden, if his administration is going to see a second term, if that's what Joe Biden wants, unclear. But if that's ultimately the goal for a second term, uh, the midterms are not looking good. This poll has already shown that we're just months away from the midterm elections and the Democrats are declining in popularity. The Russia-Ukraine conflict isn't helping, which I think Joe Biden miscalculated, the administration miscalculated as being something, a, a strategy, a flashpoint worth investing in, worth really escalating, because they believed that if they could look strong on Russia, if they could weaken Russia, right, after its entrance into Ukraine for this military operation, then that would boost the stock of Joe Biden. And in some ways, in some areas, it did, right? Especially very early on. But now as time has gone on and this conflict has really dragged on and doesn't look like it's going to come to a resolution 
soon, or at least a resolution that has real teeth. There's some talks about possibly a peace deal on the way, but every time that happens, it seems like something gets in the way. Of course, there's the ongoing propaganda war that is constantly getting in the way. But nonetheless, Joe Biden is in trouble, and that's because the Biden administration is right? And this is the analysis part of this, is that the Joe Biden administration is a placeholder presidency. It is a presidency that reflects, it is an administration that reflects almost as perfect as you can get the decline of the United States. And I'm going to be doing an article on this published probably tomorrow, I hope. It's a short article just talking about How Joe Biden can't slap his way out of, to use the reference to Will Smith's Oscar debacle, he can't slap his way out of this legitimacy crisis that he tried to with Russia. He tried to slap around Russia. I mean, if we want a metaphor, that's a metaphor. Joe Biden tried. His administration tried to slap around Russia. Sanctions, sanctions, right? Escalate militarily, pump Ukraine with weapons, try to elevate Zelensky's status, right? Uh, allow these foreign mercenaries to go into Ukraine. He's tried to tip the scales and it just hasn't worked and it's not going to work because working people are fed up and they have been for a very long time. That's what allowed Donald Trump to win in 2016 in the first place, right? It's this mass disillusionment that we're seeing from working people and Joe Biden is only further cementing that. He's a poor celebrity because presidents have to be celebrities. So Donald Trump could do that. He's a celebrity president. He was a celebrity president, right? Barack Obama had a huge element of celebrity to him. He had a lot of talent, a lot of capacity to manipulate and fool people, to put blinders over their eyes, to make uh, tepid promises or even just manipulative kind of statements that made people believe in him. Joe Biden has none of that. Joe Biden can't do that. Joe Biden can't even get out to the podium during the beginning, right? In February, late February, when Russia had announced its special military operation, Joe Biden was gave a, I think it was something like a 15-minute speech in response. He made people wait for 40 minutes before he went out to the podium. This is the kind of person that Joe Biden is. His competence is very low, right? His confidence is very low. He does not have this kind of confidence that reflects the rhetoric that he uses in his speeches. He doesn't look like a strong, quote unquote, democratic president. No, he does not look like that. His foreign policy and his domestic policy looks like rot. It looks like decline because it is, right? Imperialism is on the decline and he is caught in between the reality of his history, who he really serves, the imperialists, the very moment that we're in this crisis, COVID-19 pandemic, economic crisis. Now we have this historic war happening between Russia and Ukraine over NATO expansion and these huge questions of imperialism happening right now, a hot war happening right now that is placing Joe Biden's administration on blast, putting it on blast. And because Joe Biden is just a loyal servant to the elite, and uh, because this moment calls for massive social transformation, Joe Biden cannot help but stay right in the middle, not really doing a damn thing other than, right? Because what did Howard Zinn say? You can't be neutral on a moving train. So of course, the default is Joe Biden hearkens to his history. Joe Biden serves who he's loyal to. And so, yes, we don't get Build Back Better. We don't get healthcare. We don't get jobs. What we get is promises of police funding, an $800 billion military budget, inflation, food shortages, right? And we also get the threat of nuclear war, not because Russia is going to use one on the United States, but because the United States is pumping Ukraine with weapons, refusing to be a good faith negotiator in this conflict, really escalating things, posing with Nazi forces, neo-Nazi forces all across the media, training these forces, sending officers to train these forces over the last several years, and of course, staging the coup, which Biden was a big part of under the Obama administration in 2014. I mean, his fucking son, Hunter Biden, had a job, had a damn job at Burisma Corporation, 
right? Making what, $50,000 a month, $80,000 a month on the so-called board of that corporation. And that's because he was given special privileges after the U.S. staged a coup d'etat there. So that should tell us all we need to know about Joe Biden, where he's at. I call him a placeholder president because he absolutely can do nothing but serve the interests of the ruling class, the imperialists who he has always served in this moment of crisis, because that is what is demanded of him. Right now, you don't have really many movements demanding anything of Joe Biden, right? A lot of the movements that try to push forward Bernie Sanders, Black Lives Matter, a lot of those have retreated in many important ways. And a lot of that is because we have a Democrat in the White House. Not everyone has retreated, but a lot of people have retreated to the point where uh, people are not really challenging Joe Biden. And so what we have is just a lot of unhappy people and the possibility for another shift politically to occur. Doesn't mean much is going to change, right? Of course, whenever there is a shift, it does mean some things change. It does mean things become either more reactionary uh, or not. Uh, but the general trend is a bipartisan trend of endless war and endless austerity. Joe Biden is here to serve both. And that is his role. He is going, he's proudly saying this. I mean, this is the problem with Joe Biden. And I said before, he's not a good actor. He's not a good celebrity. He does not have the skills, the capacity or the competence to pull off what Obama could pull off. And even Donald Trump with his followers could pull off. Donald Trump could enthuse, could really throw racist red meat and, and throw all kinds of things out to the public. He can, he could criticize the media. He could look, he could put on this populist kind of image and that would get his followers and to be more enthusiastic for him and that helped him that helped that honestly was what kept him politically viable for as long as he was from the campaign into the presidency and then he lost because of blunders of officialdom honestly <laughs> like blunders that could have been avoided and and joe biden really even though he won in the final analysis handedly he didn't just win by this by the thin of by like these than hairs. He did win pretty handedly. But if Donald Trump had just done a few things different, right, he probably would have been president. It, it wouldn't have been that difficult. And that's the crisis of confidence, the crisis of legitimacy that the United States is in. You have someone like Joe Biden who's supposed to represent the best that the United States has. And really, he's the best that imperialism has. And it isn't very good because imperialism is not in good shape. The United States is not in good shape, and it is on this trend of decline. It is in this uh, ongoing, slow rolling, but really rapidly escalating crisis, and it doesn't have any solutions to the contradictions that it has itself produced.